So I am honored to introduce our next speaker, Stacy Latt Savage, Professor of Art and Design and Head of sculpture program, the Sculpture Program at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. Along with being an incredible professor, she is a sculptor who works across media with a studio practice devoted to visual discovery through making. Her recent work explores the impact that our turbulent, rapid-paced, and media-saturated culture is making on our individual and collective bodies. She widely exhibits her work nationally in a variety of venues such as museums, academic, and public galleries, and most recently, one of her sculptures was acquired by Apple Studios for an upcoming major motion picture. Within my time as a student here at UMass Dartmouth, I have interacted with Stacey Latt Savage's Alchemy 35050 on numerous occasions, and within every interaction is a new experience. We here at UMass Dartmouth are extremely lucky to not only have the wonder, wonderful sculpture that is Alchemy 35050, but also Professor Savage herself. Now let's welcome Stacey Latt Savage to the stage. Thank you, Eda. <laughs> That's so nice. So I'm here just to talk a few minutes about um, this sculpture, and I just want to say, you know, as a young female sculptor, Nancy Holt was one of my icons. I, I wouldn't be here if there weren't Nancy Holt before me, so when I came to UMass Dartmouth in 1996 for my interview, seeing Spinwinder just made it feel like this was the right place for me. It is daunting to have a sculpture so close to such an icon, but I will say, um, knowing her work so well and being such an admirer, a lot of what's happening here is um, in homage to her work, but also to the campus overall. It's, it's like Nancy Holt to Paul Rudolph, you know, me to her, us all to divine proportion, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in the Golden Spiral, but it's, um, this is intended, uh, this entire site was intended at the entrance to be a welcoming place for the residents of Dartmouth to come and gather and meet just like you're doing now uh, and have a sort of starting place on campus. Um, UMass Dartmouth had its 50th anniversary the same year the town of Dartmouth had its 350th anniversary. So I was commissioned by the town of Dartmouth to create a sculpture that would signify that union, but also talk about, like um, Andy Schnitzer was talking about, the uh, memorial or monument to the history of place. So this is genuinely the strangest project I've ever worked on. And I'll tell you, it's because Literally, the material of this sculpture is what has created this whole experience. So I'll tell you a story. Every bit of this steel, with some add-ons, comes from two major monuments in Dartmouth that were destroyed. There was, do you, any of you remember the Ray Dome in South Dartmouth? A giant Ray Dome satellite tower in South Dartmouth. It was a... Um, a uh, nautical landmark. It was on Hetty Green's son's um, estate, 240-acre estate. And so it was this giant, like, monument in Dartmouth that everybody knew about. But a young couple bought the property in 2008. They blew it up. So everybody in Dartmouth was absolutely stunned by this. And this individual, John Fitzpatrick, after the, the monument was blown up, the, the radom was blown up. He went and he grabbed all the steel he could. And he put it in his truck. All this half inch ripped. You have, imagine the force it took to make this half inch steel. I mean, they literally exploded it in Dartmouth. So John Fitzpatrick hid this steel in his pool house. <laughs> now, years earlier, another strange individual from Jay Williams from um, Dartmouth, he was in love with Lincoln Park. Do any of you know about Lincoln Park? Lincoln Park is an amusement park that was in North Dartmouth from the late 1940s, and it was torn down in 1987. So 
Without knowing this, Jay Williams went and he took all the steel he could take from Lincoln Park steel roller coaster and hit it in his garage. So that's what all these rails are that you see. So even something like this, this is an original bolt that held the roller coaster together. And I have that all throughout. And it, you could see it better from inside, but all the slats from the roller coaster are in here. So the town of Dartmouth and, and Laura Stone really wanted me to work on this piece. So they dumped a pile of scrap junk steel on the deck over in sculpture and said, what can you make of it? I said, I have no idea, but I'll get going. So I started researching maps and all kinds of maps of Dartmouth, topographical maps, population maps, farm maps, any map I could find, waterways. And I found out that UMass Dartmouth is really in the nexus of this town. It is the, begin it is the central element. And then researching, obviously knowing about Nancy Holt and researching more about Paul Rudolph, Divine Proportion and the Golden Spiral seemed the obvious choice for me to organize this steel, to have an organizing principle to take literally a pile of junk and make it into something. So that's why we have this sensibility here that it moves and it keeps just like a university with regenerating growth, intellectual growth, personal growth, these are my students, you know, everything that's meant to happen here. So that became my organizing principle, but what ended up happening was I got really interested in the oral histories of these 350 years of Dartmouth. And I've lived in the area, you know, at this point, you know, since 1996. So I started going to people I know, like the King Farm is the oldest farm in Dartmouth and actually where UMass, Dart UMass Dartmouth used to be King Farm's chicken coop. They had a chicken coop out there. So what I did is I went around and I started collecting artifacts from all over uh, different farms and meeting people in the, in the township. And what I will tell you is if we were able to take this sculpture and flip it over, which we cannot do, this is literally welded together of hundreds of pieces of steel. There are 300 year old shovels in here. There is a sickle. There are artifacts from farm equipment, all welded together and ground seamless to appear as if it's a, a, uh, a nautilus or like you are all sitting, like a campfire, something of that nature. And I will say that um, this pathway getting off the path is very much in line with Paul Rudolph's pedestrian campus concept, but it's also meant to be part of the bike path that they're creating from Provincetown to Providence. So this walkway is part of that. And um, so that's, that's the, the short version of the story of the sculpture, but like Nancy Holt, embedded within the sculpture itself is, are the artifacts of history and our culture. So.